talking about sulforaphane nitriles? Sulforaphane nitriles. Okay, so they're not bad. They're just not. They're not. They're not okay. effective. Right. Right. That was another there, question I had. Well, there there are some other compounds called indoles that we can talk about in a minute, and they're okay. present in the broccoli heads. They're not present to any large degree in broccoli sprouts. Okay. So indoles from broccoli form. We're, we're we're going all over the map here, but over. I'll come back. I'll come back. So indoles from broccoli f um, form something called indole three carbonyl or I three C, yes. which is omnipresent in health food stores and on health or in supplement sites, or DIM D I M di indoleyl methane. Um, these these compounds have gotten a mixed sort of a mixed review from a from a from a health perspective because. Um, it's been shown that some they can they can polymerize or, or form dimers or tetramers um, that actually resemble dioxin, uh, the potent toxin, um, and so in animal studies now I haven't updated my brain on this for a number of years, but um, when I last did about f four or five years ago, there were there were an equivalent number of animal studies showing a cancer preventive effect of in, indole carbonyl, I3C, um, to those which showed that it actually promoted cancer. And some of these were even in the same animal model. And what it turned out was that the, the preventive effect depended on whether you gave I3C before or after you gave a carcinogen. So as, right. as a lab animal, you're in a cage, you get, you eat what you're given, and then the way these experiments are done is a carcinogen is administered usually for you know once or for maybe three or four days, either before giving the protective compound or after giving the protective compound, and then you follow that animal out for or those animals out for many many weeks until cancers develop and you count tumors and, and you determine that there was protection or not. Um, so it depended on when vis-a-vis -vis the carcinogen they got the protection. That's great for an animal, well it's not so great for the animal, but it's great for an animal experiment, but you and I get our carcinogens continuously, one might imagine, right? Whether it's from sunlight or aflatoxins in our food or, or, benzene. or benzene, yeah. So we get our carcinogens continuously, and we do get to choose when we eat our protective compounds. If, if, if you know, if you want to look at it that way, I suppose, or else we're eating our protective compounds all along if we're eating a, a protective diet. So we were actually. This is not. I think I'm going to be able to get back to what you originally asked me, but we were quite happy when we determined that in broccoli sprouts. There was essentially no. There were essentially no indole glucosinolates. Therefore, there were no. There was no indole three carbonyl or diindolyl methane that we would have to worry about. We wouldn't have to fit, to do this sort of mental arithmetic and think, you know, is, on balance, is this a good thing or or not? Now, the epidemiologic studies still say that eating more broccoli or more cruciferous vegetables is good for you from the perspective of a bunch of different cancers, et cetera, et cetera. So, across I mean, the I don't board. across the yeah, board, yeah. So I I don't think that that in, in um, I3C indole, indole three carbonyl is bad for you. A lot of women take it for menopausal problems. Um, it's in it, it's invoked in the in the estrogen cycle, and I can't remember off the top of my head exactly what the indication is, but. Um, I don't think it's bad for you. We don't worry about it with broccoli sprouts because it's just not a factor. So back to your, we got off track. 